If you are currently out in the field as an EMT or paramedic out in the ambulance service, or if you're an EMT and paramedic student, stay tuned and please watch this entire video. I'm going to be giving you my best practices and advice to deal with COVID-19, the coronavirus, and giving you some exact stories from the field to give you my insights on how to deal with this pandemic. So let's dive into it. Now guys, the first thing I want to talk to you about is a quick story. Now I remember many times out in the field, way before, talking years, before this coronavirus pandemic even occurred, there have been times out in the field where I always use extra precautions, okay? Right? There have been times out in the field where I just felt there was something going on either with the patient or the scene, and I said, you know what? Looking at my partner, I think we should add some extra level of protection. Maybe you had experience out in the field and you had that gut feeling or instinct inside of you. I wanna share with you to use that more often, okay? I wanna share with you this. A lot of these COVID-19 patients are presenting with general weakness, okay? Diarrhea, nausea, depending on the GI symptoms, they just feel weak, okay? If you think about think about this, you know when we, we talk about uh, you know MI patients, myocardial infarction patients, right? And a lot of times you may think that oh, it's chest pain, shortness of breath, but it's really weakness and nausea. The same thing applies here with coronavirus. Okay, your index of suspicion of coronavirus should be up, not down. Means it's okay at this time. Okay, don't worry about how you look. Okay. I want you to take extra precautions because remember, you have to protect you, then your partner, then the patient, and then the community around you, okay? So it is totally appropriate to take the necessary precautions, okay? I don't want anybody out here thinking that, oh, um, this is, you know, this is, this is BS, this is too much. No, take precautions. Whether you're young or an older provider, does not matter. The way that I look at it, and you know, I'm, I'm 27 years old, guys, who wants to get sick? Whether you know that your immune system is so strong, don't take this lightly, guys. This is the time to upgrade the PPE, not downgrade it, number one. Number two is I want you to watch out, okay, for sneaky patient populations. So what I mean by that is, remember, more at-risk patients, okay, that may be calling for shortness of breath. Just because they have shortness of breath and you're thinking it's a clear cut XYZ, CHF, COPD, asthma, treat that patient, it could be COVID-19, okay? Even if everything, everything racks up, I would still keep the precaution. That's what I'm doing, that's what I would do, okay? Take the extra level of precaution, okay? Now I wanna tell you a story real quick. I used to work at an I used to work at an ambulance service where equipment supplies were low, and they actually surprisingly didn't have full equipment that we needed for some calls. And when you would ask for uh, supplies, uh, they would be low, just low on supplies. They didn't like to give out a lot of supplies. It was very weird. Okay. Now, long story short, I would always carry supplies in my pockets. And I would have those supplies on me. So I would literally, there would be like my supplies that I would keep on my person throughout the shift, right? And I would have them. Like I have like a mask, I'd have some gloves, some tape, right? A few IV catheters, right? Stuff like that, right? And I'd keep those in my pockets. I always would have a mask every single shift. I actually would have one mask in my pocket and I always had another extra mask for my partner always on my person throughout the entire shift. So if you're not already doing that, I would recommend you add this into your like pre-check for your shift. You know, this is super, super important. Thankfully, I've never been to a call where I had to scramble, you know, oh, I don't have enough PPE. But you really wanna make sure right now that you do. 
And guys, like I said, I even remember, you know, there were times where equipment was low at some stages where I would, if I had to like reuse a mask, guys, I've been there. Maybe you're experiencing that right now in your system. Like I've done it before, okay? At this place I, I, I used to, to work, I've done it before. So that is something that you wanna keep in mind, you wanna think about, do whatever you gotta do to keep yourself, your partner, the patient, and following the other bystanders around you safe. Now, when we talk about uh, quarantine, I want my thoughts on all, all this stuff going on with the, the quarantine. If you're able to stay home and you have family members that are able to stay home, go ahead and do that. We do want to watch out for the at-risk population, which is basically means anybody taking meds, anybody that is obese, and finally, you know, anybody that has you know uh, advanced age or pre-existing conditions. These are the people most at risk of getting serious complications. This does not mean, though, from the studies shown that the younger population is totally like immune or totally cannot get the disease. So again, the most important tip is you wanna keep your index of suspicion high. And the biggest problem that I see with providers is they're like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna worry about it with this person. No, no, no. It is okay to over analyze the situation right here. And that's my tip to you is have a high index of suspicion. Just like, I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a head injury patient. The, well, let's say someone fell down the stairs and hit their head and they have a headache and they're nauseous. The first thing you're gonna think about is some sort of brain bleed, right? The first thing you're gonna think about is the worst case scenario, first. You're not gonna go, ah, oh, it's probably no big deal. Probably just a concussion, they'll be fine. The same thing applies here. This all goes back to treating every patient we start with the worst case scenario and we work our way down until we find out where we want it. Where, where are they? You know, we know with our you know, different triage systems, but I like to do green, yellow, red in my brain, right? So that's my own system, green, yellow, and red. So let's say somebody's green, they're more mild. Let's say somebody is yellow, they're kind of in the middle, and red is like lights and sirens. So you want to do the same thing here with your index of suspicion. So guys, hope this video gives you some clarity as far as coronavirus and COVID-19. Stay tuned for more videos from us here at The Paramedic Coach. And guys, I want you to go down below, I want you to hit that like button, hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And for more videos, I actually have a full course. So whether you're interested in getting into EMS or you're a student right now at EMT or paramedic school, I have the number one resource online for you to crush it inside of the classroom. It's called The Paramedic Coach Course and it sells for only $49. So if you click the link down below, you can grab your copy of it. It's a hundred of my best video content for you to check out. And guys, I will see you next time. Take care.